like it wasn't weird at all. Most of the people that should be there, not who they appear at all. If you want on top, then you wouldn't hear it shit at all. But I ain't got no top, I don't need a chandelier at all. I ain't got no top, cause I be really out my mind. When the head don't work, I guarantee they get the line. They all talk, dog, it's a room full of brines. I'm royalty that means that it's in my bloodline. I had a king, made the president resign. And if I'm not the king, then I'm making doves cry. I'm stepping on the scene like I never did reply. I ain't gotta justify, I'm cool. Tear down. To get the run around. I've been doing this since I had to work at Mama House. Woo! Tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down. Everybody eating this a party one o'clock of time. You can bring your mama, daddy, sister, and your cousin out. Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the venerable Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Today, we've got a week six matchup for you here between the Cincinnati Bengals and the New Orleans Saints. And we are underway on EA Sports. And from the end zone, Deontay Hardy will bring it out. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. to throw it here with a first play. And his first look is incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Now look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched it more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. He'll slow complete there to Thomas. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The Saints are 0-5, just a dismal start to the year. And they come in in the midst of a pretty bad stretch here. Losers of five straight. And far be it for me to go ahead and go gloom and doom, right? If they fall down 7 to nothing, 14 to nothing, all of a sudden the cycle starts all over again. So the best way out of this for them, they need something to happen positive early in this game. That's a great way to help break this losing skid. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Well, this defense for the Bengals, they were very solid last week in the victory over Baltimore. Yeah, they gave up 17 points, but that's what you would consider a goal for each and every defense because if you give up 17 points a game all year long, you're thinking you're going to be a playoff team because you expect your offense to score more than that. That's what you're looking for. Room to improve, of course, but I have to say a very solid performance. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Here's Blake Gillikin now. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. A 
Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. So this, Charles, up on paper at least, not the most even of matchups. Polar opposite, really. I mean, on one sideline, you got the hottest team in the league, still unbeaten, and on the other side, a winless squad. And that's why I owe you, and I owe you big, because you did email me this week to remember any given Sunday. That was a phrase you typed to me. And that's what we have to remember in this ball game. It resounds when you think about it. Unbeaten versus winless. Any given Sunday, anything can happen in this league. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. First down there for T. Higgins. Don't let it be lost in Jamar Chase's phenomenal season. The Higgins had a big year for Cincinnati as well. Topped the 1,000-yard plateau for the first time, and he did it despite missing a few games with injuries. The third-year man could give Cincy a pair of pro bowlers in the position here in 2022. Mixon with a first down carry. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. They'll give it to Mixon. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the wall. Give him four on the carry there and second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule. I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. Here we go. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. Mixon will take this one in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt, and then the offense takes it down the field and punches it in on the short touchdown run. And Brandon, that's good complimentary football, and that's what they're going to need if they want to get out of here victorious. And his kick is good, but flags come in. Looks like we're going to get a roughing call here on the follow-through. And that flag accepted. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. and 10. Hill. And Thomas has it. And some room to maneuver. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath him, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. 
Kamara gets it again on second down. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Hill to throw on third and one. He'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals' 32-yard line. The defense surrenders a 13-yard pass play there on third and one. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Hill. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone is in a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. To throw is Hill. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. And they'll use him out of the backfield and sometimes quite a bit. They're just trying to get him touches any way they can. Four catches a week ago. There's another one right there. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. That's a really nice job there by the coverage, understanding that they're in a high-stick situation. If he doesn't make a play on that ball, there's an excellent chance it ends up either as a touchdown or as a nice gain downfield. Second and ten, Hill again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Partner, normally double coverage is reserved for receivers and tight ends, but this time they actually targeted the running back with it, and it still wasn't enough. He attacked the defense and got in a great position to haul in the catch and get a nice gain out of it. Just a yard, but that's all they needed. And by the slimmest of margins, it'll be first and goal. There may have been a little bit of an element of surprise there. Third and inches, and they go quarterback sneak. I still feel like this is a play that often is reserved for fourth down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Former ASU Sun Devil, Eno Benjamin with it. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. His second rushing touchdown of the year and third overall. And the Saints are an extra point away from evening this run. Lux with the extra point. And we are tied at seven. Teams Charles coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think this opponent's going to going out right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Once again, they run with Mixon. And once more, this play going in the wrong direction. The Saints get to the line the line again. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Sometimes you just sit back and play with what you can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package is wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. 
And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Well, this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. Well, first down there on a pick up the 25. That's good for the Saints. They'll hound it up the middle with Camara. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. Had the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they block well too. Not only are they stout at the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Staying on the ground on first with Camara. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 53 yards now on the ground at just seven carries. They're making it look easy out there. Another first downs. So, so far in this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. It's a loss of five there on the sack to bring up second and goal. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. Here's Hill. They'll set up the screen now to Camaro. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. That catch good for eight, but still, it's third and goal now. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Now Hill on third and goal. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring a fourth down here. The kick by Lutz is good. So a little bit gets a dog inside the front. It's really a nice setup for just the field. Situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. The Bengals drive about to get going. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run.
Here we go. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for Here the 26. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Burrow to his old LSU teammate Chase for a Bengal first. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up the first down. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7. Our score. down to the 42-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They will throw on first down with Burrow. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. They go back to the ground now with Mixon, and he'll go down at the 28. Four yards the pick up, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game up and out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. I'm wondering. First down, here's Burrow, and he'll spot Higgins open left side. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second down and three. Play action. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a game just one. Right number nine set to go here in the drive on third and two. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Burrow throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Now it's Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Hayden Hurst in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bengals have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. 
So that really an almost perfect drive as they chew up some clock and wind up scoring late in this first half. And remember, they've got a chance to double dip here because they're going to get the ball first to start the third quarter. So they potentially could go up two scores before the other guys get a chance to do anything. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And a white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Touchback. I'm one, right? The Bengals drive about to get going. Mixon will get it to start the second half. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. 79 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. Now with the play clock about to expire, we get a whistle and a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Here's Burrow. 
trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Pete Werner. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own 41. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. And now they will throw it with Burrow. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. We always hear from coaches how much they like the right crossing routes because they want to hit the receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? Inside handoff to Nixon. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third yard. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty of agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball. Touchdown here, but not before he does pick up the first. One yard is the game, and it's good enough for a Cincinnati first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. From the 32 now. Here's first and 10. A handoff running left. Mixon. And he stopped immediately there. Demario Davis there on the stop. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Again, it's Mixon. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So we have that running room that he had in the first half go because it looks like he's drawing up a little bit. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Two is the line to gain here on third down. Now it's Burrow. Complete to his tight end sample. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample, his first touchdown on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you've taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. The Bengal pressure gets him that time, down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it breaks up second. Well, he shot in, CD, like he was out of a cannon from that linebacker position, and even though they had a running back in the backfield, no one could stop him. 
Well, you certainly diagnosed that play perfectly because as fast as he got into the backfield, you're exactly right. The running back had no shot to get over and try and protect his quarterback, and a sack resulted. To try again after the sack, Hill steps away to his left. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Trey Hendrickson able to record his fifth sack of the season. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively. I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Hill. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. But really not much secret there. Third and long, Charles, and he was looking to throw the football. I would imagine as a defender, you're kind of salivating in that spot, right? You certainly are because third and long situations, they tip the scale towards the defense every single time. Now you're actually able to dictate and understand what the offense is trying to do. You know where the first down marker is. You set your defense that way. And maybe you can be a little more aggressive in certain situations because of that. You start focusing on your coverage assignment, and when the ball's released, you break on it and make a play, as we just saw there. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 22 yards there, a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Here we go. Line of scrimmage, the 15. Oh, it's first and 10. Uh -huh. Mixing up the middle. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. All right, ready? Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. 11, 11, 11, 11. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Here we go. The offense on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five. Here's 
Evans Hill now after the interception. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points to get you back to the field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet and said, go for it. Get it to a three-point game, and they do. Sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. The Bengals drive about to get going. And now this fourth quarter becoming very interesting. That pick six makes this a one-score game. Still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how aggressive they choose to be. He's going to wind up and air it out. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. And one play, 75 yards in zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. I'll give them eight that time, and they'll be left with second and a couple. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. He's tackled at the 29-yard line. A gain of a yard brings up third and one. Hill on third down. Got an open man. It's Alave. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And a two-score game, obviously. Every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. On second and 10, Hill. That is pulled in by Michael Thomas. And he is brought down, but now before reaching the 30. Give him 32 on the play. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. On first and 10, Hill. Alave over the middle. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Second down, Camara. And down inside the 15, shot of the 10. That'll be a 
pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10 point deficit. Now, yes, a two possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right, they did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Now receiver in motion left. A 10th carry for Kamara. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Alvin Kamara, his fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Saints have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should have realized they're not going away. And the pressure gets swings to their defense because they're going to need to find somebody to get the ball back. The ball up right on the tee, and the Saints kick team owns it away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three I'm times done. and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. They try to eat some clock and mix it. And slow going there as they'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Burrow looking to pass. He's going to let this one go deep. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Marshawn Lattimore. And the Saints are right back in this football game. Well, they're not making it easy on themselves here down the stretch. Two picks now in the fourth quarter trying to hang on to that lead. Talk about keeping someone in the game. Instead of being able to shut the door, it's still cracked open because they can come back on you now. Boy, people are really happy about those picks. Any fantasy team that has this defense. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Give him 30 yards there. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Hill now to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. On 
on second and ten. Hill, they'll get this out to Camaro. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35 yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. We're going to see another pitch and catch look to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. To the air again, Hill. Alvin Kamara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and he was able to get it by play. A gain of eight on third and three. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. two-minute drill the offense trying to go downfield and make their plays but defenses they're sitting back watching everything that they do but not too far back they want to be in position to make a play on the ball and that they did Nixon with a first down carry and he is going to lose yardage here so that time they got the left guard with a hold and let's face it in today's ball you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Here's a give to Mixon. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. 107 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Back to Mixon on second down. And he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down, but I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. And McPherson on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, 
Maybe you get a guard to help double team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. And that is not going to get it done either. Once again, he's stopped behind the line by this Bengals D. Chuck that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great. Because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On third down, here's Kamara. And he is going to be brought down. And now making matters more dire, this is going to be fourth down. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. This was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And yeah, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So for Cincinnati, they remain as hot as anyone. 6-0 now through the first month and a half. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, the downward spiral continues as they drop to 0-6 now. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Glendale to take on the Cardinals.